The recording in progress. Hello from Las Vegas, Kimberly. Nice. We celebrated my sister's in law's 30th birthday in Las Vegas, and that was pretty fun. <laughs> Vancouver, Canada, so cool. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I am so excited to do this class. Um, share. Okay, hopefully you all can see this. Can you let me know if you can see this uh, screen? So what happened to you? Yep, we can see it. You can see it, awesome. The funny thing is that if I keep it, if, I, if I'm in big in it, <laughs> I can't see the chat. I could just leave it like this. Is that okay? That way I can make sure to keep my eye on chat if you guys have any questions at all. Okay. Araceli says you can't hear. I think, I think we're okay for sound, right? Maybe it might be the com your computer. I'm not sure if you can find a mute button. If anyone else having issues with sound? Libby says, looks good this size. Okay. All righty, let's begin. Oh, I already tell you then. Got it. Okay, awesome. Okay, so here we are at our first herbal gatherings. And I really wanted to create this so that I could connect with you guys. It's actually been a few months since um, I've been teaching and I really miss that aspect of it. So um, my plan to be fully honest, was to do a monthly herbal gathering. And then I changed it to bi-monthly just to try to be realistic. But you know what? I think that we could you know, aim for doing a monthly gathering. And I want to offer this for free so that we can just create community and also offer this information to people who can't access um, you know, some of the herbal education prices and things. So um, it's out there and it's there, and it is for you to share for anyone that you think it can use this information. Um, and we're gonna just learn on one herb at a time so we can go deep on it. And like everything that I teach in my work, this is gonna be focused on the external application. So we're really kind of viewing it through skincare herbalism, um, which is what I've specialized in, really thinking about how to work with the skin, the organ, its functions and its connections to all the other parts of the body. Um, and I just wanna say a big welcome. I know that we have some people here you know, who are coming in from different places and journeys, right? And so some of you have taken classes with, with me before. Some of you are just beginning herbalism. Some of you um, are quite experienced already. And so no matter where you are right now on your kind of herbal path, um, this class is for you. And there's gonna be something here for you that you're gonna take away, right? And so whether you're here just interested in your own well-being, like your skin, you're, you're looking for solutions for yourself, Maybe you're a skincare maker, um, you know, an herbalist, whether you, you do this from home for your family or you're actually serving the community. Wellness practitioners, I mean, learning about the skin and its connection to our health, it's so impactful. And even if you're teaching yoga, meditation, any form of wellness, truly there's something here for you to learn as well and to take back. Um, and just lifelong learners, right? I think we're all kind of a curious bunch of <laughs> people who enjoy learning. And so maybe you just want to learn about oats, you want to learn about, you know, the skin. So um, this is absolutely for everyone. And just a quick introduction for those of you who don't know me, my name is Melissa. This is our first class together. I'm so glad you're here. Um, just to let you know that a little bit about myself very quickly, I am a community herbalist. Um, but I've specialized both my study and my work really focusing on the skin health. And there wasn't a specific type of class that I could take specializing in skin health. And to be honest, even throughout my herbal studies, I realized that the skin was often left out of the conversation. You know, when we study the different systems of the body and the organs, the skin was left out, you know, and I just found that really interesting. And the more I dug into the skin, and learning about the skin, the more I realized, wait a minute, that you know, we don't really understand and know about our skin very much. You know, um, it's usually thought about in terms of like beauty, um, you know, aesthetics. Um, but I really wanted to 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 focus in on the skin and and thinking about it in a holistic way. 
Um, so that's just what I've been really obsessed with for the last many years. Um, I wrote a book, it's a skincare book called Natural Homemade Skincare. And I also founded a school where I'm teaching what I, what I practice, which is skincare herbalism. Um, and, you know, doing virtual classes like this, hopefully one day even like in-person classes around my workshop table too. But all of this really to say that I'm absolutely fascinated and obsessed with this incredible organ, which I've come to, to know as, as the organ of communication and teaching people how to understand its messages, you know, and to connect with and communicate with the skin and, and your own self, really. Um, and I, uh, I, the ways that we can work together in terms of offerings that I have, I do private consultations. I call them skin reading sessions, um, just to kind of better understand your own skin and kind of the herbs and remedies that might be most supportive for you specifically. I also do an herbs for skin weekend course um, and I'll be launching that very soon, probably within, next, within the next few weeks, it'll be coming up. And then there's a skincare herbalism three month uh, mentorship. And this is for folks who really wanna go deep and learn about like the anatomy, the physiology um, of the skin um, and understanding how to read the skin, which is what I do in my, in my sessions, the skin reading sessions. So if you have any questions, I wanted to go through that really quickly, but if you have questions, just send me an email. So for our class, what we're learning in class today, I really wanted to talk about this relationship that we have with oats um, and why oats have become, are just like so misunderstood, so kind of underrated <laughs> in terms of, uh, in, in the herb world. They're just, I think, you know, they're so common. Um, so our, our relationship with oats, and we're gonna go through the Materia Medica, and then we're gonna go into more some practical. So you could take away some practical, you know, um, ideas here and you can actually make things. So we'll, we'll go into how to make your own colloidal oatmeal and some recipes and a group project that we're gonna do together. All right, before we talk about oats, let's just get very sure, like let's, you know, understand what, what specifically we're speaking about, right? So when I say oats, we're talking about the oats that we use, that, in, that we have in our pantry, you know, that we use for consumption, right? All of these oats, all forms of oats come from the same source, Avena sativa, and this is called the common oat. And so therefore, whether you have an oat that's you know, rolled, steel cut, you know, oat flour, if you have colloidal oats, it's all from the same source, Avena sativa. So they all have the same nutritional profiles, uh, medicinal uses, benefits, and qualities. When we're working with the skin, there's gonna be some differences in terms of how you need to prepare the ingredients so that it's bioavailable for the skin, right? When we consume an herb, our body does the whole process of digesting it. And when we're making remedies for the skin, we have to, you know, we have to consider how to prepare the, the herb. So, you know, if you're gonna have something that's rolled or steel cut, there's just, you know, that process of processing the herb so that you can use it for skincare. Um, but yeah, they all come from the same source. And I put a little side note that says, well, most in terms of, you know, there are different species of oats, um, but the ones that, the one that's most commonly used for con consumption that's sold in stores and in your pantry is the same source. All right. So let's talk about our ancient relationship with oats. And the interesting thing, I have a little play. <laughs> The interesting thing about, about oats is that, oh, let me just move this here. Ah, tech. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do, is just give you that little video. All right. The interesting thing about oats is that we have an incredibly long ancient relationship with oats, right? They come from this family of ancient grains. Um, that we have long adored, you know, um, and all of oats, you know, come from this same source, this wild grass, right, um, that we just have this relationship that, that's so long, right, but its qualities have just been misunderstood and undervalued, you know, and so in the grain, in the kind of oats are grain, 
and all the grains we just adore and obsess over. You know, we have actually, you know, it's one of the first plants that we cultivated. You know, grains have just like built civilizations. It's so much amazing history, but oats were just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, not that interesting to humans, right? And I just found that really fascinating. So in order to understand oats, I just wanted to go maybe through understanding how we came to have this relationship with oats. So wild oats all belong to you know, this family of grass family, which includes rice and wheat and barley and rye. And you will find them growing together often like wild, you know? So here we have you know, wild barley and wild oats kind of growing together. And there's evidence that Stone Age hunters and gatherers, right, would collect wild oats, toast them, right, but boil them, they would grind them and boil them, right, which essentially making a porridge. And you can imagine that would have been really time consuming, right? So there was a high nutritional payback uh, for this incredible effort. Um, and so, you know, oats are highly nutritious and that's the, the, the strong feature of oats. And then about 10,000 years ago, humans cultivated grains for the first time. And we cultivated barley and rye and wheat, but not oats, okay? They were unwanted and they were actually considered a nuisance, right? And it wouldn't be another thousands of years until we would cultivate oats as a, as a crop. And so, and the reason is because grains became this incredibly life-changing source of food and economy, right? We made beer and bread from grains and where this all kind of originated from, where they were first cultivated, these foods were daily staples, you know, like in, in Egyptian diets, you know, kids and adults daily ate bread and beer. Um, and it was typically made from the same grains, wheat grains, barley grains, rye grains, but oats are different. They have qualities that don't favor these foods, right? So oats don't have gluten. So they don't make breads that, you know, rise and have that nice bread texture, right? And they're they very kind of, well, you know, all of the, the kind of mucilaginous properties of oats, they would make a beer that was too thick to drink. So you can't make bread with it. You can't make beer with it. It was, it was useless. And oats were actually considered a diseased, useless form of wheat. They don't do the same things that wheat can. And so they would be, you know, any wild oats that would grow in grain crops would just be pulled out immediately. They would be burned or just fed to animals. But really interestingly, even throughout all this time when we were disparaging oats, when we're people are burning them and just giving them to animals, like they don't want anything to do with them. They knew that there were medicinal benefits and especially for the skin. And so there's been evidence, you know, found that ancient Egyptians used some of the wild oats um, in their baths, not only to treat the skin though, to actually treat, you know, insomnia and anxiety, which when we look into the nutritional profile of oats and the constituents, it is interesting um, because oats does contain melatonin, which would be helpful for the insomnia, and it contains nervines, which would be very helpful for the anxiety. And it was also used as, you know, the bath for use for, for skin irritations. And it showed up in all medical texts, you know, really throughout history for its skin uh, treatments. And then somewhere around the 1930s, there was a literature that was published that spoke about how using finely ground oats could be a, a replacement for soap for irritated skin. And at this, around that, you know, what was happening beforehand was that there was an incredibly aggressive soap marketing, which changed the way that people were cleaning their skin and people started using soap daily, right? and leading to a lot of dry skin conditions and eczema and things like this. And so this literature published, oh, you can use oats as a replacement when, this, when you're getting soap, you know, irritations from the soap. Um, and we started to see oats appearing in skincare products. And then in around 1945, they were able to grind the oats into such a fine particle size 
that it could disperse into liquids, right? So it could be added to lotions and to creams, and, um, and that's called colloidal oatmeal. And then in 2003, colloidal oatmeal was approved by the FDA as a skin protectant. So um, it is considered a, a, a drug for alleviating discomfort of, you know, or dryness associated with various skin conditions, right? Which, is, which means that colloidal oats, right? So finely ground oats that you have in your pantry are actually considered medical grade skincare. And that's pretty surprising, you know, considering how much we kind of undervalue oats and kind of, you know, you might know of it for a baby bath or something like that. But um, in, terms of, in terms of herbs that have this kind of scientific backing to it, um, you know, oats is one of those really, I don't think, I don't even know of, of, of another uh, that hat is FDA approved in this way. Um, so that's, you know, pretty remarkable. Let me just make sure that there's no questions. So yeah, no questions. So yeah, so that's pretty remarkable. And, and, it's, and it's a long history, right? Where I think even still today, um, you know, if, if I were, to, if you were to ask me, for example, if I did a class on herbs that are useful for, let's say eczema, and I did a class on like licorice root, people would be really intrigued because it's an herb that's not as well known. And, you know, all, you know, people are kind of really intrigued by these unknown herbs, but the ones that are the more common herbs that are so accessible, sometimes we tend to kind of like overlook them. But when you really need something, a solution for your skin, they're really, you know, oats would be where to go in terms of for, um, for these kinds of conditions like eczema or something like that. And the way to understand how oats is working is to, do, is to look at kind of the, uh, uh, the Materia Medica, right? And a Materia Medica is the study of, you know, the origins and properties of remedial substances. So it could be of oats, but it could be of other things like let's say oils, you know, plant oils. We could have a Materia Medica on that. Um, and the herbs for skin materia medica, which is what I teach, um, is specific to the topical application. So what are the oats doing topically on the skin um, to help alleviate these different conditions? And how do we use it to receive those benefits? So in the classroom, I have um, kind of a far more, you know, more written on the Materia Medica. And at any time then you can go in and you can kind of read through that and have all that information with the links to studies and things like that. So you can have that too. Um, but just to kind of explain the different parts of the Materia Medica and how it's important and relates to the skin, the parts used is the growth. So it's the actual kind of, you know, the, the grain that we consume, right? So rolled oats, let's say, is the growth that's been flattened. Right, a flower is the growth that's been flowered. Um, so the growth is the part that we really are focusing in on for the skin. You can use like oat straw, the straw of the plant, but it and in terms of the what we're gonna be talking about for the benefits that you're receiving, it really is the growth. Contraindications are always important to know, um, and. What, we, what would be important is, of course, if you have an oat allergy, then you wouldn't want to use oats topically either. Um, the people with celiac disease avoid oats, not because oats has gluten, but because oats are manufactured in places where other grains are manufactured. So there could be a contamination there. And um, yet from the research that I, you know, um, there's no evidence that using gluten on this, you know, in cosmetics is harmful. Um, but we would want to be super careful, especially since we're using it like on the face, if you were to get it in your mouth. So you would want to use, you know, gluten-free oats. Ooh. Tastes. So these are the, the parts that I highlight or that I emboldened here. These are, I think, some of the really important parts of the features of a Materia Medica um, that tell me a lot of information about how this herb is going to be used for the skin. The taste of an herb tells you about the qualities of the herb, 
right? There's a lot of information that you know about an herb when you literally taste it. And you can pick up on those sweet tastes, bitter tastes, you know, sour tastes. And it tells you a lot about the quality of that herb. And this is mostly information that comes up to, to us from, you know, like uh, Eastern uh, herbalism. So like traditional Chinese medicine, and Ayurveda. Um, but I think, you know, taste is such a wonderful way to understand the herb. Uh, the energetics is helpful. Knowing an herb's energetics, which actually just means kind of like the constitution of the herb. If it's hot, cold, dry, or moist, um, is in really important to help you match the person to the herb because we have a constitution and herbs have a constitution. And we want to try to create really good matches, right? So let's say if my constitution is really hot and fiery, uh, I would want to avoid herbs that are hot and fiery and using those on the skin because it could just make it more of a situation worse, right? So that's going to help me make really good matches of herb to person. Knowing the constituents of an herb is going to be important because as in skincare herbalism, we have to formulate the herb to make it available for the skin, bioavailable, right? So I want to know what constituents are present and therefore what's the best way to formulate it, right? Some are oil soluble, some are water soluble. So some would be better in an oil preparation, some will be better in a water-based preparation. Um, and that's just kind of important to know uh, for formulation. And then the primary actions helps you just know how to, what herbs to choose to address the specific needs of the skin so that you can make real goal specific, you know, um, blends. So for oats specifically, uh, the taste of oats is sweet. And the sweet taste tells us that this herb is uh, moistening and it, and it tonifies the skin barrier. And tonifies means almost like strengthens, right? And so uh, it's a very nourishing herb. The energetics is cooling neutral and moistening. So it's considered cooling because it's anti-inflammatory. So that has a kind of a very cooling effect, especially on these like red hot conditions. Um, but it's not cooling in the way that let's say like peppermint is, right? That it, um, so even if you are, have a cold constitution, um, oats are still kind of neutral. It doesn't throw your constitution off and create an imbalance. So that's really great because uh, it means that any skin type or any constitution can use oats uh, regularly and it's moistening. So this herb is gonna to help to moisten the tissues of the skin. Now the key constituents, oats are highly nutritious, right? There are a lot of nutrients in oats. And for the constituents, we're really looking at those that relate specifically to the skin. Okay, so the things that can have an, you know, can actually help to nourish and even cross the skin barrier. Um, so, and I've highlighted these three points as well, the polysaccharides, antioxidants, and lipids, because it's this, these kind of constituents that give oats its incredible properties um, for the skin. So the polysaccharides are what gives skin or oats that mucilaginous quality, and it's what helps to really moisten uh, the tissues. The lipids are the oils. So oats have the highest content of oils of any other grain. It's incredibly high, which is why, you know, way back when those early ancestors were going through so much effort to prepare oats as food because it's an, an incredible source of energy, right? It's super high in, 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 in really healthy fats and uh, lots of other nutrition as well. But it's a high source of energy. And for our skin, it's nourishing with those lipids. Yeah, it's high in amino acids, which helps you know, a lot with the healing processes of the skin, but it's incredibly high in antioxidants. And what's, what's super interesting about the antioxidants in oats is that um, they very much relate to the skin and to the needs of the skin. And we're gonna, um, I'll show you a little bit more on that in a, in a moment. Um, the saponins is what gives oats that like 
cleansing ability, right? So saponins can actually help bind water and oil together um, and it creates that cleansing effect on the skin. So, you know, in the 1930s when they were publishing, oh, you could use oats as a soap replacement. It's because it kind of has a similar function of soap in that it helps to clean the skin. But unlike soap, it's not gonna dry out the skin. It's not pulling out too much oil. It's actually replenishing oils back into the skin. Um, and then it's rich in vitamins. And the vitamins that are specific to the skin, um, it's actually rich in those. So it has vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E. Um, and then again, what's interesting here is that, you know, some of these things like vitamin A, vitamin C, and E, some are oil, oil soluble and some are water soluble. And so that's interesting to know because if you really want the full spectrum of those, all those vitamins, you're going to want to prepare oats in a way where you have, you know, oat, you have oil and water to help extract out those constituents so that when you prepare it together, you can put that on the skin and you're getting all of those, all of those nutrients. The primary actions of oats are that they're emollient. Uh, it's a vulnerary herb. So that means that it helps to support the healing processes of the skin and it's nutritive, right? And when we put all of this together in terms of like, okay, so what does all this information mean in terms of what it's doing for the skin? Um, that's what I'm gonna go over with you now. And I put this little note on the top. I said, uh, skin barrier protection. Because I think that when we, when we think about you know, up here, what oats are really providing the skin with these polysaccharides, the lipids, the antioxidants, um, it is helping to protect the skin barrier. And I really believe that this is where, you know, skincare is gonna start moving towards. Um, and when I say it's like the future of, it's like my little, my little, you know, <laughs> prediction here, but the future of, but I'm, it's actually the return of skincare. And a lot of what I talk about in my classes is that the, the true, like the, the true um, potential and use of skincare is to really help with health of the body, right? We want to, this, our skin being our largest organ, it's also our largest immune organ, right? And it has this incredible uh, job of keeping us healthy, right? And so we want to try to help support the skin barrier in its functions, right? Um, and the way that we do that is by nourishing and protecting the, the, the skin. Um, a lot of skincare has been focused, I mean, this modern skincare is really focused on changing the skin. Um, and I think a lot of people are also kind of realizing that those promises aren't even being made or kept, right? Of what, what is supposed to you know, happen when you use these products and how your skin is gonna dramatically change. That doesn't actually you know, usually happen, right? So, um, but we can definitely uh, pro you know, protect our skin barrier. And, um, and I think that's really the mindset that we wanna have moving forward with skincare. And oats is just this phenomenal herb that helps to protect our skin barrier. Um, it's a nourishing tonic. And so what that means is that it is a food-like herb that you can use daily, right? So it is tonifying, it's strengthening um, the skin and it's nourishing um, and it's safe to use every day. In fact, it's recommended that you would use oats twice a day for the skin, especially if you're trying to help relieve any kind of symptoms or you know, irritations that you have. Um, so it restores tones and invigorates, you know, tonics help to restore tone and invigorate systems in the body and the, the skin being one of the systems in the body. Uh, it promotes general health and well-being, um, and it's safe for sensitive skin and for all skin conditions. So that's really good news because you can use it uh, for any, any, anyone. And it's clinically proven, you know, there is significant uh, it, you know, it's been shown to have significant improvement in skin conditions. Um, it's, you know, it helps with dryness. It decreases um, dehydration. Um, it helps to relieve minor irritations and then even, you know, more serious irritations like eczema and psoriasis. Um, it helps with UV damage, right? And so um, um, I think that's just incredible that to have that kind of, you know, 
data that we can see how, what it's actually doing for the skin. And the other kind of huge thing about oats um, is that it helps us take care of our skin in a way where we don't need to use a lot of products for the skin, right? Because it's providing the skin barrier with so much of what it needs that it actually minimizes the amount of products that you need to use. And this is incredibly healthy for everyone's skin is, to, is using less product, right? And I think that you know, the more that people start realizing that we, you know, the benefits of actually just protecting the skin barrier, um, part of that will be this more minimal routines of what we're actually putting onto our skin. Um, so that's another kind of prediction that where skincare is moving towards. It's just being more multifunctional. And, it, and oats is, is incredible in that way. This one single ingredient um, does all of these incredible, uh, you know, functions for the skin. So it's a complete moisturizer. And that's pretty rare, okay? Because it's actually providing you both, uh, it's a humectant. So it's helping you with both retaining the water component and it's an occlusive. So it's also helping with, you know, giving you, providing you the oil component and the true moisturizer and what the skin needs in terms of moisturization is both the, the water, the hydration and the oil. And usually we have to provide that separately, right? And like a lotion is essentially water and oil combined together. Oats in itself, all alone, is a complete moisturizer. Um, it provides antioxidant protection. And so and the, the antioxidants are so specific to um, wonderful antioxidants for the skin and the kind of antioxidants that you would find in like, you know, skincare products, right? So it has this ferulic acid, which actually helps to boost the activities and the effectiveness of the other antioxidants. Um, it's what's added to vitamin C serums as well. Um, it, help, it has caffeic acids, which help to increase collagen product, production. And it, then it has this P-cumeric acid, which helps to prevent hyperpigmentation. So it's giving you that kind of protection from UV damage. Um, um, and it's helping to, to prevent hyperpigmentation. It's not giving you like sun protection. You'll have to provide that for yourself, you know, using sunscreens and, um, you know, safe, uh, being safe in the sun. Um, but it helps to protect the skin when it's receiving that UV damage. And it's a natural buffer. Um, and so part of keeping a really skin, uh, uh, you know, protecting the skin barrier is protecting the acid mantle. So our skin's pH is actually pretty acidic. And because it's acidic, it's what helps to keep our skin from getting just overwhelmed with bacteria and fungus and things like that growing. It's really important to, um, the, the, to our skin. It's actually the first line of defense is that, that kind of um, acid mantle. Um, but when we use certain products and soap, you know, soap is a really strong base and it actually, um, kind of breaks down the, the pH of our skin. It creates an imbalance and it makes our skin more susceptible then to, you know, it, it kind of compromises the skin barrier, right? So when you use oats on the skin, especially after using a cleanser or something like that, you're, you can actually help to regulate the pH, to rebalance your pH. So that's in that healthy zone where it, where it wants to be. It's a prebiotic. And I think this is really wildly fascinating. Um, you know, those beta glucans um, are a, which is what gives us um, oats that kind of mucilaginous quality. It's actually a form, it's a type of soluble fiber and it feeds um, the bacteria on the skin and it really helps to increase the healthy skin flora specifically. And when there's an imbalance in skin flora, um, it's been it's been connected to and associated with different types of skin irritations, even acne. Um, you know, um, there are specific types of bacteria that kind of proliferate. They get you know on the skin and then create these kind of conditions, these irritations and things, right? So, what we want to try to do is part of protecting the skin barrier really is keeping that kind of skin flora balanced, right? Um, and that means not using kind of products that create imbalances in the first place, um, but those prebiotics are feeding um, the, the healthy bacteria as well and trying to keep a healthy skin barrier. Itch, I think is really important to say because 
the fact that oats can help with itch, there's, I think there's almost like nothing as frustrating as like an itch that you can't relieve that feeling, even like if I say the word, even if I say itch and I start talking about itch, you could even like start to feel a little itchy yourself, right? It's just the worst feeling. Um, and when certain skin conditions, you know, feel itchy and when we have to scratch it constantly, we're actually making it worse. We're creating more damage to the area and you can kind of get stuck in this cycle. So what oats helps to do because of its anti-inflammatory properties, it just helps to stop that itch scratch cycle. So it doesn't make the condition worse, right? It kind of helps to keep your, your hands off of your skin um, from irritating it further. Um, and I just keep going back to this point uh, that it's FDA approved. And it's not that I need my herbs to be, you know, scientifically uh, you know, FDA approved. There's a, that's a whole complicated topic. And ultimately, there is no more important, you know, scientific study than your own personal experience with an herb, right? Um, but the fact that it's FDA approved means that it's been studied extensively. And there's not enough, you know, interest in, you know, and money being put into studying other herbs in the same way. Um, and maybe it's because, you know, oatmeal was studied for the skin and skin is an incredibly profitable skincare is a huge business and so money was put into it. Um, but it, what it means is that there's a lot of scientific studies. There's a lot of clear data and that we can see how it's working, you know? Um, and that's just a part of, you know, herb, herbalism that I really enjoy as well is, is the science part of it. You know, herbalism is, is both a science and as an art. Um, and I love that there's so much rich information and especially, I think especially too, because we can see how herbs work on the skin, right? And a lot of questions are like, you know, Will it have any effect? Does it actually work? You know, can you essentially nourish your skin topically? And because it's been researched so extensively, we can see that yes, you can. And this is how. This is these are the constituents, and this is how it's crossing the skin barrier, and this is the impact it's having on the skin. You know, and that's so amazing to be able to see that. Um, our early ancestors didn't need to see it. They just kind of understood that how, you know, that these things worked. They maybe didn't know exactly why, but they knew um, that oats work to help alleviate itch and dryness and irritations, right? Um, but we can see how it's working. Um, and I think that's really interesting as well. So are there any questions about, um, so far, what what we kind of dug into in terms of like, you know, the how the benefits of oats and how it's used. Really, it's it is for any skin, you know, whether or not, whether or not there's a condition that you're trying to treat, let's say like acne or you know, kind of eczema or something like that, even just for that daily care you know, oats is, is incredibly helpful just for protecting and nourishing the skin barrier, right? So you don't actually need to be treating something um, to, to use oats in your skincare daily. And because it's giving you all of these benefits in terms of, you know, the moisturization, the antioxidants, you know, um, it, uh, because of some of the things that it does in terms of uh, the saponins, the cleansing, you can use oats in itself in so many different ways in so many parts of your of, of you know what would be a skincare routine you know for cleansing for moisturizing um for daily use okay so someone here wrote deborah said i love using oats i grind it up uh, and use it in my oatmeal soap bars yes absolutely um that is a wonderful way to put it put it into as well Flora, how would you go about using oats for eczema specifically? Okay, great. So as you can see, there's a lot of benefits. So Flora, let's go into what's next, which is like how to use it for the skin. So part of, 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 of knowing how to work with the herb, right? If we're treating a specific condition, let's say there's an eczema or something like that, right? We would make a poultice. 
And a poultice is where we're just taking that herbal material and applying it onto the skin. So the herb has skin contact for a long time so that it can kind of really kind of get in there and do its work, right? So with oats, we need to take the oats and grind it down as finely as possible so that we can extract out its colloidal properties and all of the constituents and we can apply that to the skin. And what we wanna do then is take that powder and um, act, you know, kind of essentially um, you know, activate it with water, right? To help, to help pull out those, those constituents, right? Um, and I would also add in oil to help pull out some of the oil-soluble vitamins um, in oats as well. So we wanna make a paste with water and oil and create a paste with the oats and then apply that directly onto the skin. So if you're doing like a skin treatment, like you're kind of trying to help relieve an area where you have eczema, for example, you might make kind of like a slightly creamier, thicker consistency by using less water. Um, make that and then apply that over the area, right? And even if you're using oats just as like a daily, like in your skincare routine, let's say as a cleanser, that same consistency, that kind of slightly thick and creamier consistency, you could use that then to just kind of cleanse, cleanse your skin. And for that daily nourishing tonic support, you can, um, I would make this oat milk serum because you can actually leave this colloidal oat onto the skin. You don't need to wash it off at all, right? And so this kind of, I, I'm just calling it an oat milk serum. Um, it provides that, daily skin barrier support, all of the functions that it provides you, the antioxidants, the UV, the hyperpigmentation, the moisture, everything. Um, and here's how you make it. And when I turn off the camera, the, the slides real quick, I'll just quickly show you so you can just have a visual of it too. Um, but yeah, it's basically you're taking colloidal oatmeal. So whether you've purchased colloidal oatmeal, let's say from a skincare supply store, or you've made it yourself, and I'm about to show you how in a second too, from the rolled oats in your pantry. You're gonna take the colloidal oatmeal and you're going to make kind of like a very like creamy, milky consistency by combining water and a few drops of a plant oil. Now, and then you're going to just apply that onto the skin, almost like a lotion, you know, and then just leave it on that you're done. Um, it, it, the consistency, I love the way it feels. To me, it feels silky. My daughter, who is a teenager, she says it feels slimy. Um, so it's not her favorite, you know, texture. But I love it. I love how silky it feels on the skin. Um, in terms of which plant oil, because often people ask about what plant oil is best to use. Any, any oil that you can purchase in a supermarket that we use for consumption is the same exact you know, oil that you use for the skin, okay? The difference is that like, let's say when you buy an oil for the skin, it's just about whether or not like it's how it's been manufactured, like, sorry, other way around. If you buy the oil for the food, then it has, you know, it's been manufactured specifically for food. Um, and that's the only difference, but really it's the same, it's the same thing. But if you were to go into a supermarket, let's say like a Whole Foods, and you go into the skincare aisle to purchase grapeseed oil, is significantly more expensive. And this is like a frustrating thing about skincare is that it's often the same ingredients that are used in food are significantly more expensive when it's marketed for skincare, when it's packaged and bottled for skincare, right? Um, and oil is one of those. So I, you know, you can just go to your supermarket oil and what you're looking for is an oil that's you know minimally re refined, the less, the, you know, something that's a virgin, unrefined would be best. Um, but I know that, you know, whatever is accessible is, is and available to you is where, what you should, what you should choose, right? But something that I like for, for the skin is like grapeseed oil, rice bran oil, almond, avocado, ready, readily available at your supermarket. Um, other favorites that I like to get from different like skincare specialty stores where I can get just like amazing oils, like seed oils, things like tomato seed oil, things that we wouldn't use for cooking or, you know, cooking as much, but um, really specifically for the skin. Um, 
sorry, I just have a question. Livy asked almond oil. Yes, almond oil is a great is a great oil for the skin and the same almond oil that you would purchase in your supermarket aisle. It doesn't have to be an almond oil that's packaged in the skincare aisle. It's the same thing. Um, I love jojoba. It is the it is the oil that I use the most because it suits most skin types. So when I'm if I'm formulating something for you know an individual or I'm using an oil for a class, I always use jojoba, and it just has so many amazing properties as well. Um, but oat oil is something that's new to me. As I was putting the class together, I wanted to experience oat oil. And so I purchased some oat oil. Um, it has the most incredible uh, texture for the skin. It feels like, like velvety on the skin, but it soaks in very quickly and it's completely non-greasy. I absolutely love it. And the oat oil has those same qualities as the colloidal oatmeal. So the anti-inflammatory and um, the specific fatty acids that, I, that it has, the linoleic uh, fatty acids really help to restore the skin barrier, especially a skin barrier that's been compromised. Um, so it's very healing. Deborah said, where do you purchase oat oil from? Oh, I have to run and get the, I'm, I'm never really good with remembering names, but I'm gonna run and get it now. Where can we purchase oat oil? Okay, I'm gonna go get it. Hold tight, real quick. So I purchased, for, I, I got two different samples I could try out, you know, to see if so there are differences. Um, making cosmetics, I don't know if you can see that one. And this one is from uh, packaging, health and beauty. <laughs> it doesn't, I don't even know if the name brand is health and beauty. I'm gonna have to look this one up because I don't think their label tells us too much. But these, this is a cold pressed, which I was kind of confused about because I didn't think that you could cold press oil or cold press an oat. But um, this one is, can't see the label on the first one. Making cosmetics. So I will, I will, I will add it into our, our classroom. So this oil will be really good specifically if you're trying, if you're treating any conditions like eczema, any compromised, you know, rashes, things like that. It feels, do you know what it feels like? Cause you know how oats, it actually helps to thicken, um, thicken things, right? And it has like that mucilaginous quality. So it feels really rich. Um, like it has a, like a lot of body to it, right? It's not thin at all, but it's not greasy. Like it, it doesn't feel greasy or oily. I really love it. Okay, purchases on Amazon. I didn't, I purchased these from the, the websites, but I, I think you might be able to get this one on Amazon. I'm not too sure. Jeanette says, would you consider adding another herbal product, like um, another herb with the oats? Yes. So let's say like if we consider, you know, oats as a simple, like simple, right? On its own, it's a nourishing tonic for the skin. On its own, it provides all of these benefits. I think one of the, um, my favorite parts of skincare herbalism is the kind of synergy working with different herbs for, diff for those different needs of the skin, right? So um, a big part of what I teach in class is how to blend herbs together and create a really focused blend that's gonna support, you know, kind of the different needs of the skin. So I love blending, blending herbs together. And I would definitely do that. Um, okay. So the first thing that you'd need to do, whether you have, let's say, steel cut oats, oat rolled oats, whatever form, you need to, even if you have oat flour in you know, your pantry, we need to make it extra fine. So where it can really disperse really well into water, right? And we can pull out those uh, colloidal you know, properties as well. So 
we need to break it down. And to make your own quota oatmeal, you're gonna grind the oats in your, in your home blender, okay? Um, the one thing I'll say about grinding oats is that because it's so rich in, in fat, it can kind of gum up if you grind it for too long. So I'll like grind it, don't let the blender get hot or anything like that. Just let grind it, you know, um, and um, just watch out for that, for it kind of gumming up because it has so much fat, uh, so many oils in it. And then you're going to sift it really well. And whatever kind of particles were too big to fall through, you're going to, you're going to, you know, kind of get rid of that. You're going to take everything again and now take that powder and you're going to grind that again. Try to grind it down even further, sift it again. And you want to do this about three times at least because, you know, kind of sifting and, and getting it finer and finer and finer. And what you're left with is like this silky fine colloidal oatmeal. I'll be honest, I have never achieved the same, um, like when I purchased, this is like, for example, this is colloidal oatmeal that I purchased and colloidal oatmeal is sold specifically for the skin. It's not sold for consumption. Um, so it's not the same as oat flour. Um, I mean, in terms of the texture, right? How fine it is. I can't get this level of fineness in, in my at home blender and stuff like that. I, I, you know, I try. So I actually prefer to just go ahead and purchase colloidal oatmeal, but it's important for everyone to know how to make it yourself so that you can, you know, wherever you are, you can always make this whenever you need, even if you have your colloidal oats or not, right? Um, Araceli says quick oats even. So quick oats, it is the same in terms of it's from the same source of Yuna Sativa, except that it's been processed a step further than rolled oats. And I think that when we start kind of, when we use ingredients that have been processed, um, that's where we can kind of start to kind of break down, uh, degrade some of those nutritional qualities. We're always looking for like the least processed. So like potentially the least processed would be something like a uh, um, steel cut oats because it's just the oat groat that's just like roughly chopped and that's it. Um, colloidal oats are made from the groat of the oat groat as well. It's just put through their machinery uh, to make it extra fine. Libby says, can I blend in a coffee bean grinder? Um, so I, 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 I don't own a coffee bean grinder, so I haven't tried it. I have a bullet blender and then like a, a Vitamix blender. And I you can definitely use a bullet blender. I, I, I imagine that you could use a coffee bean grinder. I don't know how, a coffee bean grinder would work with once it's an oat flour, if it can grind it down further, um, but definitely give that a try. You're just trying to grind your oat as finely as possible. So you're gonna take your time with it. You're gonna grind it, pulse it, sift it, grind it, pulse it, sift it, you know, and just trying to make it as fine as possible um, is, is the goal. So I think it's really important to, to experience making it even if you end up deciding just to go ahead and, and purchase some colloidal oat, oatmeal for the skin um, and have that. So, which brings me to our group project. So I don't want this to be like the end of the class necessarily, right? It's all about being able to take action with what you're learning um, and apply it. And if you have questions, I wanna make sure I'm available for you too. So in the classroom, I kind of created this kind of group project that you can work on. Um, and just share with us, you know, what you made, how it turned out, any questions, and um, and I think that'd be really fun to do. Um, and so what we're going to do is make the coil oatmeal, so you can make it yourself at home and see how fine you can get that texture. Um, and if you have any, if you did use, for example, Livy, if you used your coffee bean grinder, that'd be a really great thing to comment, you know, in the group section so that we can, um, you know, learn from each other as well. And then I'd love for you to try making this chai body scrub recipe, which is in my book. And this has been like the kind of secret ingredient that I add to all of my scrubs um, because it gives a scrub such an incredible texture and consistency on the skin where it's not just an oily and, you know, scratchy <laughs> experience. The, adding the colloidal oatmeal to it just makes it um, so creamy and, and such a satisfying and beautiful texture. 
So I really want you to experience, you know, how oats provides that consistency and texture to a product. You know, skincare is, it's all about the benefits of the skin, the nutrition, the nourishment, but it's also about the enjoyment, right? Our skin is a sensorial organ. It feels good to, you know, to take, you know, to apply these products. So you want to create things that feel really yummy and cozy and colloidal oats. I love what it does, you know, to, for that. So I'd love for you to experience that and make it and um, let us know your notes as well. Now, when you registered, I just want to quickly, you know, we're almost at the end. So I want to tie this up for any questions left at the end. When you registered for the class, Hopefully you received some sort of feedback from the, from the um, website. It's a new program, so I'm not too sure what you saw, but um, I'm trying to figure out those kinks. But hopefully you're able to access the, the virtual classroom. And what you'll see is that there in the, where it says curriculum at the bottom of the screen, like where we, the OATS class on my website, see if you can now enter into the class, into the different lessons. Okay, and there you're gonna find a lot more information of what we just kind of went through as well. The recipes, um, the Materia Medica, that's really fleshed out for you and, um, and the group project. And at the bottom of every you know, lesson, you can leave a comment and I'll see those comments so that I can interact with you, okay? So uh, hopefully uh, this wasn't too rushed. I just wanted to make sure that I ended on time. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope you're kind of excited about oats in a different way um, and, you know, kind of maybe inspired to use oats in, on your skin. Maybe even today, if you have it in your pantry, you can start right away. Um, if you have any questions at all, let me know. I'm going to hang around to answer questions. Oh, I told you I'd show you a little demo too. Here, let me get come out of this real quick. All right, guys. So if you had to pop off, that's totally okay, I understand. Um, but let me show you very quickly as well, the kind of the oat milk serum. So this is my colloidal oats that I purchased online. It's actually, it's still, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, and so when you're making your oat serum that you wanna apply onto your skin daily, um, you have to make it every day fresh. You can't make it ahead of time because we're not using the preservatives and all those extra things, right? So it means that we're gonna to have to use, make it every day daily. And it's actually not you know, that difficult, right? Because it's such a quick process. And you're basically just gonna add a, a little bit of colloidal oats to a bowl. And then I have here, just like some water. And you wanna add about double the amount of water and possibly a little bit more. So you just wanna feel it out and you just mix it. So what I think is really important to do is just to have like a bowl in your bathroom, have your colloidal oats in a, in a container that's you know, well sealed. You don't want it getting humid or anything like that. Um, and so, and then have your bowl and just so you can mix it easily every day. So it's kind of like a thin texture. The other day I tried, I said to myself, oh, let me make it before I take my shower. And then after I take a shower, I'll put it on before going to bed. And I made it and it was nice and thin like this. And then when I got out of the shower, it had really thickened up. That's all of the, uh, the mucilaginous properties of the oats. So once it's like that, I'm just, all I do is put it on my hands and then just rub it in. And it feels like so nice. It's like almost like a lotion, you know, that's it. And so you just let it sit, don't rinse it off or anything. And you can put that in the morning, you can put it on in, the, in that in the evenings, you know, before bed, you can do it whenever you need to, if there's an area that you have any kind of irritation, you can just apply it there on as often as you need. Um, it's such a simple thing to do. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Jen, thank you. Jeanette, thank you so much. I will put the slides. I will uh, be checking into the classroom to make sure if you have any comments or questions. Um, thanks so much. And I'll see you again for our next herbal gathering. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Deborah.
Araceli, what's your best email for you? Because I have tried emailing you from work classes. Okay, I'm gonna connect with you. Livy, can I show you the coffee bean grinder results? Yes, I would absolutely love if you do that, please. Um, and yeah, please, please also leave a comment for everyone so they can, oh, you did it already. I love that. How fine is it? Do you feel any texture? I do feel texture, but I haven't sifted yet. Yeah. So you just want to sift it a few times. So where it's at right now, when it's like an oat flour, that's a really nice texture for cleansing because you're still getting that little bit of exfoliation. Um, and when you add the water, it's just it's gonna be like creamy, but still have a little bit of exfoliation. So that's really nice. Um, yeah, when you get it this fine, it will like disperse into the, into the water and you can add this into like your bombs. I have a recipe where you can add it into a bomb as well. Um, yeah. And for sifting, just recommend like a little metal, like kitchen yeah. sifter. I'm like, okay. always, I'm always looking for like the finest sifter I can possibly get because the more fine you can break something down, the more available it is to your skin, you know? And so for sifting, I'm trying to get it as fine as possible. Um, and I can show you kind of some of the more recent ones that I've found. <laughs> yes, but a tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, Danny wants to know if milky oats are considered a vena sativa. Yes, they are. So uh, milky oats are the a vena sativa plant and it's harvested at its milky stage when it's still green. Um, and as well as, you know, oat straw, right? So that would be harvested for teas and things um, at the milky oat stage. And it's at that stage where it has more of its nervine qualities. Um, so that's why kind of milky oats and oat straw have those beautiful like nourishing, but also really, you know, those nervine qualities that helps our nervous system. And then when the plant matures, um, that's when they harvest the seed. Essentially a grain is the seed of a grass, you know? And so we take the seed and that's your oat grain. Um, and then they process it in different ways for food. Um, any thoughts on using this on clients in a facial? Yes, so I would, I would use the colloidal oats um, and then you can add that in. So you can, what will be really beautiful is to be able to kind of custom any, any masks that they're gonna be using. I would add colloidal oats. Actually, I would add it in as almost like a base to almost any blend that you make because it's, you can use it on, so, on, on pretty much all skin types and all skin conditions. It's giving so much to the skin and helping to repair the skin barrier but it's also giving so much to the product in terms of the texture and consistency because it gives that beautiful richness and body. So when you grind, for example, lavender, you can't get it to that fine powder where it kind of disperses, right? It's like little particles always. So it can kind of feel a little bit kind of thin and gritty on the skin. You need to add something that's gonna give it a nice body and help it you know, um, sit on the skin. So I always add colloidal oats or clay, depending on the skin needs. Um, but I would kind of add colloidal oats in always. Livy, are steel cut oats your first choice for this recipe? So I, I really, yeah, I love steel cut oats. It's just about, are we able to grind it as, as finely as we need to get it? That's just the only challenge. Um, essentially, you could think of colloidal oatmeal as you know, the whole root just ground to a powder, right? And steel cut is just the step, it's just the whole oat chopped into smaller pieces. So it, I would say it would, it'd be the less processed, the best in that way. Um, and if you have a good grinder at home and you can get it to a finely ground powder, then I would definitely go for it, yeah. Um, Deborah, do you have a recipe for oat milk? So <laughs> I, I tried making oat milk and it was, it just, it just didn't, it didn't turn out very well at all. Um, 
but I didn't keep trying. And the thing with recipes and getting to know these plants, you really gotta just keep, you gotta keep trying, you know? Um, so I think I'd have to try and try again. With all the recipes that I make, I have so many attempts and failures before I figured things out. I just didn't keep going with the oat milk. <laughs> Jeanette, loving the recipes in your book too. Oh, great. I'm so happy to hear that. It's funny because the recipes are really simple, right? And I, I, I wanted it to be that way intentionally because I believe it's the best for the skin. You know, I don't think the skin needs these over complications. And usually when people are looking for good solutions for their skin, because they've been experiencing some trouble, the answer is simplicity. Um, but the, I will tell you a little side story. The uh, publishers were a little concerned that it would be too simple. And they were trying to, you know, kind of encourage me to add more ingredients. And I just kept saying, no, it just, that's the whole reason. <laughs> so when I hear that someone's enjoying it, it always makes me like, oh, phew, because I was always so concerned that people would find it, you know, boring. Like, oh, that's it. But truly that's it. You know, that's what really works the best. Uh, Deborah says, I've been making my own coconut milk and it tastes fantastic, very easy to make. Yeah, but see, that's the thing with oats. I make almond milk and I've made coconut milk, but oats are, have a different quality. And I think that's why people were frustrated with oats. They don't act the same. And it's because of all of the, it's because of what oats has and those, all those polysaccharides, the beta glucans, the, you know, the soluble fiber, it just, it acts different. And so when I tried making oat milk, yeah, it was like um, a weird, texture, I felt like, you know, it was kind of thicker and I don't know, I just didn't enjoy it as much. <laughs> but you, we can figure all these things out, right? When we just keep trying. Well, this is fun. Thanks everyone for being here. I haven't had a class in, in a quite some time. So Bye, Libby. Thank you so much for joining. So, um, so yeah. So I was glad to get this out, and let's definitely let's definitely meet up for more and more. Where can you book be purchased? It can be purchased anywhere um, books are sold. So you know, Amazon and uh, different bookstores. Uh, you can go on my website, and I and I also have kind of the different bookstores where you can find it. All right, guys. All right, so you love your new setup, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So I just moved into the into this house, um, and uh, I was lucky enough to be able to have secured this sunroom for myself. So this is the workshop table, and hopefully one day, you know, we can have some in, in person gatherings. I'm in North Carolina, so if anyone's in North Carolina, let me know. Uh, Deborah, I think so. I can't wait for the next class. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement too, because I'm gonna get that class out. <laughs> um, there's quite a lot of research and time in putting the classes together, but it's a, a huge passion and I just enjoy it so much. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely get that next class out. All right, so stay connected, everybody. Take care. Alyssa, can I just quickly ask you something? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, thank you so much, uh, first of all. It was Really well done, super. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't get the login information for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, um, but I did direct message you with my email address, which I think you have anyway, but whenever you get the chance, it would just be awesome. So then I can see, yeah. Yeah, the yeah back you definitely, end wanna, and, definitely wanna be able to access that classroom so you have all the information there. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I will, I will uh, set that up for you for sure. Yeah, yes. whenever you get the chance. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Take care. <laughs> okay. All righty. All right, guys. Well, this is fun. Take care. See you next time.